Hello, and welcome back to our third video in our mug making tutorial series, where today we're going to cover a very important topic that isn't discussed very much. Some potters use it, some potters don't, and it's called the claw. Now, to start, if you haven't already seen the first two videos in the series, I highly recommend it. It sets you up well, and I use certain terminology that will be used in this video. And so if you haven't seen the last ones, you may not understand it. So let's get started. I'm going to get some clay, beautifully centered, right on the wheel. <laughs> so just like I said before, if you don't feel super, super comfortable coning or centering, or I'm going to be opening up the middle, then I highly suggest practicing that and getting really comfortable there before you start pulling up the walls. The reason why is that all three of those different ideas really help to get your hands to stay centered and to practice being stable as they're working. And if we remember before, the idea of confident but gentle. And so you have to practice, practice, practice so that you can get confident with the moves that you're making, but still learn how to be gentle with the clay. Because if you're too confident and you push too hard, the Clay will not appreciate it. So the reason why I haven't opened it up yet is that I want to talk about two things first before we get started with the claw. The first thing is that I shouldn't have necessarily mentioned this in the last video, but it's an interesting thing to think about as you're working. And that is clay, the wider you make it and the farther you stretch it, the thinner it gets. Now, simple idea, makes sense. If you put a hole in the middle and you stretch it out wider, it'll get thinner and thinner and thinner the wider you go because it only has so much clay. The more you increase its circumference, the thinner it will become. But that becomes really helpful later because of the idea that both for the claw and for pulling up the walls generally, you are stretching the clay in some way like that. So you're either pulling the clay further out to make it a little bit thinner and then pulling it up. For the claw specifically, what we're gonna be doing is when we put the hole in the middle and open it up, we pinch to make it a little bit thinner and then bring that up. And so the claw is a lot closer to coning, where with coning, the idea is that you're pushing together with both hands, and the only place that the clay can go is up. It's basically like doing a massive one with your fingertips. So fast forward, it's going to be centered and pretty. All right, got a nice pretty hole in the middle. And now we're going to learn the claw, finally. So the idea with the claw, like I had said before, is that you can use either your left hand or your right hand to pinch the wall, make it a little bit thinner at the bottom, and then pull it all the way up. And actually, I have a very fancy little animation for y'all to show what it looks like and what's happening going on in here, because you typically don't get to see it. So please enjoy. All right, welcome back. I hope that made sense. But the idea, got your claw hand, going all the way down, pinching, bringing it up. We're not trying to pull it as tall as possible. We're just trying to get the wall started because when it's a little bit taller, it's gonna be a little bit easier to pull later versus just trying to pull the stump. It takes a lot of little pulls to get it initially going before we can get some height. So the claw, helps do that in kind of one smooth motion. Now, I said that you could do that with either your left hand or your right hand. Even though I am left-handed, I do still suggest the left hand for right-handers as well, and I'll tell you why. So, if the wheel is spinning this way, and I was gonna do the claw with my right hand, I would be holding it 
at my three o'clock on my clock, pinching and bringing it up. Now, if I do it my, with my right hand, I can su help support it with my left hand, but it's really just relying on that right hand. Versus if you do it with the left, I would suggest doing it at six o'clock versus three o'clock. And the reason why is six o'clock, my left hand is comfy, yet it's still nice and smooth going out of my fingertips. Versus at three o'clock, I really have to tuck over and that feels uncomfortable for me. So I'm gonna do it at six o'clock, pinch in and bring it up. But luckily with this, I can also help stabilize it a lot closer to my fingertips with my right hand versus with my right hand, I can really only help stabilize my wrist. And so this feels a lot more comfortable to really help secure my left hand with my right hand as well. It's a lot more stable. Now some may say, why can't you do it at six o'clock with your right hand? And the reason why is that we talked about the wheel spinning this way. We don't wanna work on this side because it's gonna go and immediately hit my fingertips. Well, if we do it with our right hand at six o'clock, it's gonna come around and hit us with the fingertips. So if you're working at six o'clock, I would work with your left hand. If you're working at three o'clock, I would work with your right hand. So I'm gonna show this a little bit with my right hand and a little bit with my left hand. My right hand, not as comfortable. I'm left-handed, but we'll give it a go. Making sure I add a little bit of water. Make it a tiny bit off-center because my right hand is still learning to work on its own. Very timid first one with the right hand, but not bad. I'll show you what it looks like with the left hand. Left hand, my right hand can be a lot closer. Left hand feels a little bit more comfortable. Now, I s told you before that I wanted to talk about two different ideas. The first one was the idea that as clay gets wider and wider and wider, it gets thinner and thinner as a general idea. The second idea is a cylinder, a straight up cylinder versus a volcano. Now volcano, is where it's a cylinder, but it's a little bit more tapered in. So let's say, we're just gonna say this is cylinder. And to make a volcano, the same idea is if this gets wider, it gets thinner. As I push it further and further in, it'll get thicker but it'll eventually get to a point where it doesn't appreciate that. Clay will enjoy stretching and going in to a certain amount of, to a certain point. So there's many different ways to bring clay in. There's the general comfort hug, but I'm gonna kinda hug it a little bit more to bring it in. That's one way, just kinda hugging it. There is the collaring, or almost looks like choking. And then there's the method that I use. It's a little bit more wonky, a little bit stranger takes a little bit longer for some people to adjust to, but I personally love it, it's my favorite and I use it all the time. And that is similar to kind of collaring, or, but what I do that's different is instead of having my hands like this, I bring my pointer finger in at a knuckle. So instead of trying to wrap the surface area, surface area all around these fingertips, I'll bring this in and I have six points of contact. One, two, three, 
four, five, six. And as I'm going, I'm not trying to keep my hands like this or keep my hands like that. I want to keep equal distance between these fingers. So when I'm here, touching with all six points of contact, Now clay can go in pretty far as well. But all slight variations of what's nicknamed a volcano. Let's actually get that a little bit more centered. I've been playing with it a little bit too much and it's starting to get a tiny bit unhappy with me but that's okay. So, why volcano versus a cylinder, right? We're gonna make a mug, so eventually it's gonna be a cylinder. Now, the reason why volcano is that as we eventually get into talking about pulling up a cylinder, what we don't wanna do is have it go past cylinder when we start and end up tapering out. Because as we try to pull that cylinder up and up, if it's already tapered out a little bit at the start, then it's just gonna eventually go wider and wider and wider into a bowl. That's why a lot of people, when they're first learning how to make a cylinder, make kind of a sh very kind of shallow bowl. Not shallow, deep, but like not very wide. And so what I do to counteract that is that I will start with the top a little bit smaller than I want, what I want, just wide enough for my hand to fit in so that when I actually start trying to pull up the walls, it may come out a little bit, but it still wants to stay within that general upright realm. You can see it actually came out to almost upright. And so if you imagine if it started out upright, it would already taper too far out. And what you'll also learn as you're working is that clay prefers so much more to stretch than it does to come in. It has a lot more leeway to get wider than it does to get narrower, especially once it starts to get thin. When it gets thin, all you can really do is stretch. If you try to compress a thin vessel, like this lip almost, then you'll get basically a rubber band, where if you had a rubber band and you try to push the rubber band in, eventually you're just gonna get kind of like a, a kink in the rubber band where it's gonna like create a little bend and then you'll get a lot of bends and it'll get really upset. Versus it's a lot easier to stretch a rubber band, but if you stretch a rubber band, it has a certain point where it'll start to wanna rip a little bit, rip a little bit, and then rip a lot. Clay is very similar, especially in the lip. So if we try to compress this, I may throw this pretty thin. If we try to compress this, eventually you'll get a little ripple, and then you'll get a lot of ripples. And if we try to stretch it, it has a little bit more leeway to stretch, but eventually it wants to like tear down the edge because it only has so much give. So if you can see, we can really, we can really stretch that out and it's a lot more comfortable. Bringing it in will be a little bit less comfortable. You can tell it's already starting to want, want to be a tiny bit not happy with me. Now, let's try to bring it in a lot to see what it looks like, to see how far it wants to kind of give. So now it's getting kind of the little bumpy ridges. And so it may not look like much. Right now it's still actually pretty contained. This is why I like the stoneware, is that it has a little bit nicer give. If you try working with porcelain first, it can be a little bit more frustrating. It takes a little bit more time to get used to it. And this is also a great test for your clay to see kind of how well it wants to work with you. This stoneware actually wants to work with me pretty well. I would have thought it would have rippled by now. Let's actually try to see if we can make this a little bit thinner so I can give a little bit better of a demonstration. Yeah, that was already actually pretty upset with me. <laughs> Take two. 
Yeah, you'll, you'll learn that the more you stretch and bring the clay in over and over and over again, you're just going to keep soaking up water. It's just going to keep getting more and more flimsy. So let's, let's try the demonstration again. So the clay is really thin, has a lot less give and a lot less leeway. Let's try bringing it in. It starts to get that ripple, starts to get that ripple, a lot of ripples, a lot of ripples, and stop. This is actually a great kind of test. If we look at that, you can see that that looks very close to kind of a rubber band idea. of It wants to kind of come together only so much before it just starts to bend and ripple and have a lot less give. If it was this thin, this would also get to the point where if I tried to stretch it a lot, it would have a lot less leeway. Maybe we can try that. Yeah, even now, even me trying to bring this in, you can see that it's already wanting to get really unhappy with me because it's going under a lot more force. And because it was dealing with everything above it, stretching, coming back in, stretching, coming back in, it only has so many chances before it really wants to kind of just give up, fold over. And kind of ripple out. But I hope that makes sense. Working with the claw, you can either work with your right hand and stabilize with your left, pull in a little bit, come up, or with your left hand, which I think will be easier for everybody actually, is left, but you can really support it a little bit better with your right hand to pull up. You're just trying to pull a little bit. You're not trying to pull yourself all the way up. Don't try to pull everything in one pull. Um, but it's just kind of a, just a starter pull so that once we get into the next video, how to properly pull up the wall, you already get a jump start where instead of starting from one inch off the bat, you're now starting three to four inches off the bat, which helps a lot. All right, well, I'll see y'all in the next video.